in theaters around the world, where action is almost a religion. They worship a hero, Chow Yun Fat. Who is Chow Yun Fat? I think the first thing I think of when I think of Chow Yun Fat is cool. He's cool. He's cool. Very yes. cool. The epitome of cool. Put your gun down. He's as smooth as silk. Two guns, diving, shooting, spinning, rolling. Quiet, brave, dashing, charming. You can't take your eyes off of the guy. See him, you're not going to forget him. This guy's so cool, he should be here in America. Hmm, it's interesting. My first memory of seeing Chow Yun Fat, maybe I think it was the killer. I was actually at the video store and I was just searching for um, a film to watch. And I just saw this tall, striking, handsome Chinese guy with two guns in his hand. And the slug line was 10,000 bullets. And, you know, when you see 10,000 bullets, you have to see that movie. Well, the Hong Kong movies take everything like action and tweak it a little further. So instead of just having a gunfight where two shots go off, you have like a hundred bullets. It's exciting, there's an energy there that you don't find all the time in American films. Well, the, the two-fisted, blazing guns is Chow Yun Fat's signature. No one does it better than Chow Yun Fat. He's really good at doing those crazy acrobatic shooting stuff where he's diving through the air and shooting. Or... It's like ballet. It's like watching a dance. I would credit uh, the image of Chow Yun Fat in The Killer to John Woo because that's an image that you know, John Woo consciously created. John Woo taught Chow Yun-Fat how to hold two guns, even though John never fired a gun before, either, you know. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how to handle the guns, you know. The director gave me the privilege to train me. He made me a very, very smooth, graceful action hero. He's an action star, but he's more than that. He's not just somebody who's just big and muscles everywhere and just comes breaking down your door. You see Bruce Willis or some other people, and they're just struggling, going, oh, I'm dying, you know? He's just, like, dying, maybe, or he's got a bullet in him, but he's cool, you know? And that's insane. No one does that. I knew that Chai Yun Fat had some incredible charisma to pull off that kind of a stunt. He's got, like, this whole gentlemanly thing about him. He can be suave. It's like Bond, man. John. John Lee. Once you put him on a big screen, he projects this kind of star charisma. I don't know how to describe it. He just has this incredible screen magnetism. He doesn't have to be in the middle of a scene or have any dialogue to be mesmerizing. His screen presence is just, he's a movie star. Yeah, his screen presence, but there was more to him than that. I mean, you know, he just had a strength. You could tell from his eyes that he's seen some things. There's only a few actors that I know of that can do that. I need guns. You somehow root for this guy who kills people. Chow in fact can blow people away, but for some reason you love the guy. Whenever Chow Fat play a role, I might not be a you know total, total good guy. The characters always have hearts, and he projected that through his you know performance, and that's what made the audience like him, even though he's not playing a you know totally cool guy. Jesus Christ, you're getting yourself killed for a cop? Not a cop. His son. A lot of the concepts are about honor in those movies, and I think uh, Chow Yun Fat can always epitomize honor. We'll come to work into Joey's house. Doing the right thing for the right person, maybe for the wrong reasons, but he always comes out, you know, being the moralistic, correct character. There is an underlying notion of vulnerability or emotion that's unusual for an action star. My family would die. A lot of people regard Chow Yun Fat as an action star. He's not. He can do anything. Comedies, tragedies, and even period films. Chow Yun Fat's just the man. Thank you. The studio system saw this guy. They thought probably the same thing I thought. You know, let's get him over here. I cannot say this. Go to Hollywood to make a horror movie is my goal. You know, one of my goals. But I can say that it was kind of my dream. It took me a long time to convince him. At that time, he felt like, you know, I'm a huge star in Asia. Why should I go to Hollywood? Now, I would give credits to the gangsters or triads because they started to threaten him. Remember the scene in Godfather where, you know, a producer woke up with a horse in his bed? Uh, Chan Fa woke up one morning with a cat's head neatly chopped, thrown into his garden. And he was so horrified that, okay, I, you know, I, I think I better take your advice. I should try Hollywood. I need a passport. Can you help me? I think he very much 
uh, recognizes that Hollywood is the holy grail, the Rome of commercial world cinema, the next mountain to climb. I think he's an artist. I think creatively he just wanted to try something else as well. Even though I made a lot of movies, more than 70-something movies, you know, the first time in here, everything is explore my world. And it had taken him some time to decide what it was going to be. Very careful about it. I waited for three years to wait for this project. Lisa Hansen and Teddy Z, who were at the time at Columbia, and they were really huge fans of Char and Fat, and they brought up this, you know, project, The Replacement Killers, and they said, we wanted this to be Char and Fat's first American film. And he had convinced his bosses uh, at Columbia that the time would be right to create a new action star. And why not take an action star that had a worldwide following and put him in his first American movie? I got this phone call from Columbia Pictures. You ever hear of a guy named Chow Yun Fat? Absolutely. They said, well, would you like to make a film with him? Tell me where to show up. Very clearly, and Antoine kind of, you know, um, worshipped Chow Yun Fat, and he took a lot of the images from Chow's earlier Hong Kong films and used them into replacement killers. The way that he dressed, the way that he used the two guns and even turned around, you know, stuff like that. It's very cool, you know. You want to see him go back and do the stuff that got you excited in the first place. So I would believe that a lot of them would like to see him be the killer, the slick, cool, young fat, and do that thing that he does better than anybody else. It's an easy role for him. He, he played it many times before in Hong Kong. More or less, this character is similar to what I've done before. A lot of action, not much dialogue. His character does not need to speak a lot of dialogue, and so that's per it's a perfect first film for him. It combined what was old for him with a lot of what was new for him. And in terms of tailoring the material for him, we knew that it would not be in anybody's interest to give Yun Fat three-page monologues in uh, English for his first movie. We had to retailer it for his persona, the strong and silent type. I have a lot of discussion with the writer, with the studio. Which is, I tried to put a lot of influence in the role. This character is from China. His American English is very choppy. You don't know how to associate with the people. I need a package. A package? What's a package? He just like a killing machine, very lonely, helpless. But this character, the situation is more or less like my reality. I miss my mom, miss my family. I have such kind of feeling. All I ever wanted was for my family to be safe. In the beginning, both John and Chai Fat had the same problem, the language. Because in the actor, you've got to speak the language in front of the camera. Mentally, for myself, I have a lot of struggle inside my body, in my blood, in my soul. Because it's difficult for me to use your mother language as my mother language. I have a lot of experience in performance, but not in here. I mean, can you imagine going over there and speaking Cantonese? And you have to act every day, and you have to understand all the different emotional beats. And then put him, uh, like this? Yes, great. Okay? It was a very, very powerful challenge for an actor. I got a lot of benefit in the set to associate with the coolest, which is great. I say the word to somebody else, don't say that. You know, this is very rude. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a new kid in town. I don't know. I think the uh, relationship between an actor and the director is very important. On replacement killers, is a you know true collaboration because both of them are kind of new because it was Chan Fat's first American film and Antoine's first feature film. I think I was more nervous about working with Chan Yun Fat than my first feature just because he's made so many movies. And then when I met him, I couldn't believe how humble he was and how nice of a man he is. That helped. Ease and the nervousness. He always give me a lot of support, which is I can overcome all my worry. I think the thing was was he believed in me. He honestly believes in the filmmaker. He believes in your passion, in your vision, and uh, what you expected of him and what you wanted him to do. Any first chance, I would try. Bang, bang, bang. Okay, so here, this way. Here. He's able to agree to disagree in classiest way, and he has a way of saying what he really would like to do. If it fits what I want, or if it's better than what I wanted, then me and him had a relationship where I would say, great, let's do that. It was very interesting because I saw how much influence an actor can have on a production. He would come up with ideas during the production of like, well, how about if I do this and I turn like that? What if I slide on the ground and stop myself with a gun? 
And I would go, slide and stop yourself with a gun. Come on, let's go. You know, you, you go and make it happen. Because you know he can pull it off. That's the reason why you do that. And they really work well together. What Sean Fat did not know about the American system, American way of filmmaking, Antoine helped him. And Sean Fat came up with a lot of suggestions for him. You know, so it, it's, a, it's a great uh, combination. Making a film in America was difficult for Sean Fat. Our system is quite different. We have a very complete, very, very good system here. Everybody knows his job or her job. Whereas in Hong Kong, it's sort of like a guerrilla warfare. The amount of time that American movies take is much longer than it is in Hong Kong. The amount of waiting is much longer than it was in Hong Kong. The scope much larger than in Hong Kong. Usually, we take a very fast pacing in Hong Kong, about 30 days or 45 days. And finish a movie. We work uh, seven days a week. Well, we have a lot of unions and rules here, and you can't just do that. Hong Kong, we, we don't have such kind of huge catering car. My name is Hoppy. I'm the craft service guy. You don't have a truck like this. The crew doesn't work as fast as they usually do. It could for you. Charlie Fett was very good in that, you know, even though he was a big star, he would like to, you know, help on the set. Hold on. Okay. For instance, we were shooting a film in France one time, and he, he did that, he exactly did that. He moved luggage for the crew, and then people were horrified. I said, you don't need to do that. I said, but he just wanted to help, you know, he's, he's always like that. You can't have Chai and Fat run over and push a dolly. He's the star here. You don't do our work. Because otherwise you'd be treading into other people's territory, you know. Take one. In Hong Kong, we don't have the big trailer. More or less get used to, to associate with our people. I enjoy every moment in the set with the crews. We have a, a good time there. In the trailer, I feel cold. Chow Yun Fat's back on the set. Chow comes to the set, man. It's just, it's a pleasure. Everybody relaxes and everybody's excited. They treat me like a old friends. He was grateful and happy. He let everybody on the set know that. I mean, everybody loved him. Loved him. I mean, all the people around me is very important in the set. You must have a very good emotion. You must have a very good relationship with the crew, with the people work with in the movie. Are you okay? I'm fine. You need some water? I'm fine. What always amazed me was that that impression I had and his energy and sweetness that I saw that first day, it never wavered for a second. Charlie and Fat would come to the set every day and say hello to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Young here. Craft service, the drivers, PAs, the guy sweeping the floors, everyone, and remember their names. If I can associate with the people very, very gently, very, very flamely every day, I feel happy. He never disrespected anyone. He never raised his voice. He wanted to know how everyone was doing. Found everybody's birthday and the smallest crew member, and I mean the smallest job. If you were sick on the set, him and Jasmine would bring special tea. Don't smell it because you won't drink it, but they would bring you stuff and say, drink this. I mean, he truly cared about people. They are my good friend for five months together. Well, you need me to uh, pick up your jacket for you? Why should I have to cheat them back? I respect them a lot. I just want to kill them sometimes, you know what I mean? Because he made me look bad, and he was always laughing. He does that really well, and it doesn't need translation. And whatever your job may be on that set, it's just as important as mine, and he made everyone feel that way. My boss. My boss. My boss. My boss. My boss. Oh, uh, you are my boss. Wow, John Fred is good, cool, this guy. Behind the camera, actually, in a movie, more than 100 people to work for. John Fred, just only one cool sub. Make me very aggressive, handsome, graceful in front of the camera. Movie release in the in the theater, I gain all all the benefit. Nobody knows who is the lighting man, who is the cameraman behind the camera, who is the pops man, who is the whip guy. If I don't pay them respect, I feel very sorry. I feel very upset. If I don't treat them well, who take care of me? I'm like perfect. I learned a lot about the type of person I like to become, as far as just how to be a, a human being, really. You know, I've never made a passport before for someone I didn't want to see leave. When I first met Chow Yun Fat and Jasmine, his wife, they had said to me that if I were to ever come to Hong Kong, 
it would be a really amazing experience. Chow Yun Fat's like fandom in Hong Kong and all over Asia is huge. I mean, he's like a god over there. It was everything that they had said and more at the premiere of the movie. Boy, did I find out then. I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. They had a, a motorcade, and people in the street, when they looked over and saw him, would start screaming and running towards the car. It was like the president was in town. <laughs> And then the scene at the theater was, you know, one of those really out of the movies crush of people and bodyguards and pushing their way through and stuff like that. It was paparazzi hundredfold, and he came off like he was like the godfather. He was every bit the movie star. It was unbelievable. I'm not even exaggerating. It was like a football game. He was crushed all the time, but there was no sense of danger. There was always with some kind of friendliness, like he was a member of some big family. They were so calm and considerate unlike here we're just wild and crazy they were like screaming and wanting to touch him they were very respectful they were very considerate of his space people would always say to him oh I love you young fat in Chinese and he would say something back to each person and somehow manage to keep moving while seemingly just taking all the time in the world and answering everybody's questions I'll never forget it And apparently, I remember talking to his wife, Jasmine, that this is just every day of the week. This goes on. Some people, they have guts. They will ask you, Mr. Chow, can I have your autograph? Some people, they are very, very respect you. Your private light, they won't bother you. Up to this day, Chow and Fat never acts like he's a you know, superstar. He acts like a normal person. When I go to the street, I go to anywhere. He goes to the market, he shops, you know, he rides in a subway, you know. Be an actor is not a big deal. This is kind of your job, you know. You have your job, I have my job. We have different jobs. This is very good experience. Even though maybe I will go back to Hong Kong for my Hong Kong movie career, but I still, this is very good opportunity for me to work with all you guys in here. I will miss you. In terms of Yan Fat's future, it's unlimited because Already he's done three very different films, and then his next film, the Ang Lee movie, is another different movie, so a different style. He can become a star here. He can make it onto the screen in America as a leading man. There's no way to predict the future, but I think he has an enormous amount of charisma, and I think it's international. I don't think it has to do with what language he's speaking. What do I get, I He's got the goods. He's a real leading man, and a real Hollywood leading man. The only thing between him and American superstardom is language that if he can become just perfectly fluent in English and think in English and feel in English. But I know if I want to be an actor in here, I have a long, long way to go. I have to work hard every day on my American English. This is not your fight. I know. This is the way I chose it. If you're not be an actor, what can I do? Nothing. I know that Yum Fat's goal is to continue to do a variety of movies. The first one I like to do a dumb guy without a word. <laughs> I also think he's in a unique position given that the American audience is not used to Asian people and don't see them as American movie stars. The Chinese persona has not been Americanized yet. It's still new. And that happens with a lot of uh, minority uh, actors. You don't see them in that light. The leading man, blazing the guns, being the hero. It was nice to see that. I were kind of um, like in a situation in the, um, in the 60s and 70s where the only two uh, leading black actors are Cindy Poitier and Harry Belafonte. And look at, <laughs> look at it now. I mean, there's so many great, you know, African-American actors. I think um, Asian Americans are up to a slow start. I think you know, you know, it's about time to catch up. I would like to see Chai Fat making not only Americans but films for the world audience. It would be a loss uh, for him not to do films in Asia. I think he should continue doing that, but he should also do American films. I believe that one word, F A T E, fate. How many people they can accept Yun Fat in here depends on fate.